Uh, hello, today we are covering section 7.2. Welcome to chapter 7, Bernoulli Trials. Now, by now, um, you should have on your own read, um, read and maybe did a, a problem or two in chapter 7, section, sorry, 7.1, called Probability Distributions. And hopefully you know what probability distributions are. Well, just to cover a few definitions and make sure everyone knows, a probability distribution is really, as the name suggests, a distribution of the probabilities. So, for example, if you know about an event and you know about all of the outcomes of that event and the probability of all of the different ways that an event can turn out, then you know its probability distribution. So, an example of a probability distribution would be something like this. You would have a random variable, um, which basically is a variable that has values that turn out randomly. That's why we call it a random variable. For example, throwing a die. I can have, basically the random variable is the value of the face on the die. It's, it can be a number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Uh, it could be a lot of other things as well. Um, here uh, we have a probability distribution for group presentations for people randomly being chosen for a group. Basically, you know, are you the first to be chosen, are you the second, are you the third, and so on. Um, well, these are all the ways you can be chosen out of five people, and these are all your probabilities. It turns out, well, if you're randomly chosen, that means that you could be in any one of the five positions. You're equally likely to be in any one of the five positions in the presentation. And its graph looks like this, right? All the lines in the bar graph are the same height. It's discrete because the positions, there's no such thing. There's a, such a thing as being first to present, second to present, third to present, but there is no one and a half or two and two thirds or any crazy stuff. So these are discrete positions. These are positions that can only occur in whole numbers and the probability of each one of these is 1 over 5 because they're all equally likely. And so that also means that things like a di dice roll or being chosen or which position you're chosen in to present to do a presentation is known as a discrete probability and it's also a uniform distribution because all of them are equally likely so we call that a discrete uniform distribution now um, or a discrete uniform probability distribution that every probability is 1 over n where n is the number of different ways that an event can turn out um, its uh, expectation is given here but what about if the what if perhaps you're not equally likely to get any one or the other? Like for example, you're in a store and they have different numbers of items of something you're looking for. In this case, canoes, but it could be anything. It could be any item in a store, and like any store, they would have different amounts of different things in stock, and and maybe instead of because of because we're in coronavirus mode now. It's a matter of the store vendor going into the store for you and randomly choosing which of the same kind of item um, they think you want. You know, uh, it could be anything at all, uh, unless you're specifying a particular brand. Then, quite often, uh, if it's a drop off situation, then they'll just walk in, they'll just go into the store, pick the, uh, pick the order for you. And if um, if the brand of the item doesn't matter, then they go. They just pick any one. And if anyone's equally likely, then we have the similar situations at the canoe lengths. And uh, the lengths of each canoe, or the length, or basically, uh, th this also could be each the each kind of item. And this is the probability of choosing that kind of item, right? So in this case, it's canoe length. They have different canoes of different lengths. And the probability of choosing each one of those canoes is different because there's different numbers of canoes. And if you're going to be randomly assigned a canoe, then the probability of that happening is determined by these. Now, um, now the probability of success here really means that you would be the probability of getting a canoe you want. 
a, a canoe of a particular length, or the probability of, say, a discrete uniform, like, for example, uh, the probability of a dice coming out a certain to a certain number, maybe three. So you got the probability of rolling a three on a die, or the probability of being fourth to present in a list of presenters, or the probability of getting a canoe that's, you know, six meters long. So, and that's the kind of uh, that's the kind of uh, histogram. You see, not a histogram, but it's a the kind of uh, discrete graph you see here. Let's just go over some terms. A binomial distribution is based on Bernoulli trials. A Bernoulli trial is simply a trial that contains either success or failure. We've, we've studied in the probability section in chapter 6 that the probability of success <coughs> excuse me, is really the probability of getting an outcome that you want which is really the number of successes divided by the size of the sample space, as we discussed in, in chapter 6. The probability of failure is really 1 minus the probability of success. And that's really all it is. What is the probability of n successes in m trials? Well, this is where we actually take that binomial distribution thing and take it a little further. Let's say that you're flipping a coin, and we're talking about something that's simply success or failure. We could turn anything into a Bernoulli trial. For example, a dice roll can be turned into a Bernoulli trial. Maybe, maybe to you, a success is rolling a value of 3. Well, if it's rolling a value of 3, either you rolled the value of 3 or you did not. So the probability of rolling a 3 is 1 over 6. The probability of not rolling a 3 is 1 minus 1 over 6, or 5 over 6, okay? That's the probability of not rolling a 3. 1 minus the probability of failure is the probability of success. Or the probability of failure is 1 minus the probability of success. The probability of rolling a 3 is 1 over 6. The probability of not rolling a 3 is 5 over 6 for a die. But what is the probability of rolling, say, five threes in ten trials, right? All right, we can liken the probability of rolling, um, say, five values of three in ten trials like this. If I roll a three five times, I'm succeeding. I get five successes here. That's 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. It's actually 1 over 6 to the power 5. And for 10 trials, well, that's for the... I, I also must include the probabilities of my 5 failures. So then I got 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6. In other words, 5 over 6 to the power 5. So the general formula is the probability of success raised to the number of successes multiplied by the probability of failure raised to the power of the number of failures, which is really just whatever remains out of m minus n, multiplied by the ways in which you can get five failures, which is just m choose n. Because, of course, order doesn't matter the way we are seeking this problem. All right, so... The last thing is expectation, so that expectation is the average number of successes in n trials. So here we are rolling a die 10 times and expecting, well, we, we would like to have five successes, but in this case we're not asking that question now. We're asking on average, if I roll a die 10 times, how many successes will I have? Well, that means that you have to have your 10 attempts, right? N equals 10. The number of rolls is 10. And P is the probability of getting a, rolling a 3. The probability of getting a 3 is 1 over 6. So that's 10 times 1 over 6, which is 10 over 6. So 10 divided by 6, I get 5 thirds. 5 thirds turns out to be 1.6 repeating forever which is roughly 1.7. So what does that mean in English? 
My expectation is 1.7. Do not confuse it with probability. What am I saying when I say my expectation is 1.7? It doesn't mean any probability is 1.7. That's impossible. Probability can never be greater than 1. So 1.7 is not a probability. Okay? <clears throat> so 1.7 is, what does that number say? It means that on average, out of 10 rolls, I will get a 3 1.66666 repeating times. In other words, out of 10 rolls, fewer than 2 rolls will be successful on average. That's what I'm saying with expectation, and that's what an expectation of 1.66666666 means, or roughly 1.7, that on average, 1.7 out of 10 rolls will actually be successful. So it sounds like it is a bit of a stretch for five of them to be successful, although not outside the realm of probability. You might want to compute it yourself. Anyway, that's... Uh, that's all I have to say for binomial distributions. A question could be asked, what is the expectation? What is the expected canoe length? You know, if you go, if you walk into a store, on average, what length of canoe are you, um, what length of canoe, what is the average length of a canoe that you could possibly walk out with? Um, I have to choose my words rather precisely here because we don't mean what is the canoe that you're most likely to leave with because expectation is kind of funny, right? Expectation is the average of, of some event. Like on, on average, what, uh, what would be your average number that you would roll on a die? Not the number that's most likely to show up. It turns out that because basically what you do because it's a uniform distribution with dice and every dice value is equally likely you just multiply each outcome by its by the number of ways it can come out and divide by the total number of outcomes well you get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 divided by 6 because those are the only outcomes you've got and you get a, an expectation of 3.5 now, 3.5 doesn't sound like a dice roll to me. It doesn't sound like, you know, you're never going to roll a 3.5 on a die. So what the heck does a, what, what meaning can we give to a value of 3.5 and an expectation for a dice roll? Well, it turns out that that is what we mean by expectation. It is not, it doesn't, it is not the same as saying which value is most likely to come out. All 3.5 means is that on average, given any dice roll, it will come out to, on average, a value of 3.5. It's an average. Well then, it doesn't mean, in other words, that it will be the value of any existing dice roll, but it'll be the average of a particular dice roll that might come out. That's what we mean by expectation. So expectation for a canoe length would be the average of the canoe length. And what would we do here? Well, we have the length of the canoe, which is the outcome, multiplied by the probability, and we add them all up. So the length multiplied by the probability, 4.6, the probability is 7 over 25, 5 times 10 over 25, 5.2, and you find these products, and then you add them like this, right? And you find that once you get all that added up, you get a value of 5.1. And that means that if you walk into that canoe shop um, or sports store or whatever, on average you will walk out with a canoe measuring 5.1 meters. However, keep in mind that there is not a single canoe here in this list that is 5.1 meters. Okay, and that's the point of this exercise is to show that we're not meaning that the expectation is any particular value, but it is on average, the value of when you walk into a shop and, the, and these are the different kinds of canoes that they have and these are the probabilities that this is the average length of a canoe you will walk out with, okay? So it does not mean the canoe you're most likely to come out with. That's a whole other matter.